broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. And HMSA, helping Hawaii's youth and their families stay healthy today, tomorrow, and for generations to come. HMSA, trusted for generations. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. I remember I jumped up for a ball, and when I came down, I landed on my neck. And I just blacked out. The severe dangers of sports concussion. Plus, how to perfect a kendama trick called the airplane. Also, Hawaii's wedding business boom after the legalization of same-sex marriage. How a traditional Japanese card game revives face-to-face -face interaction. And how a Maui artist turns metal into water. Meet a family obsessed with words. And a librarian who takes weaving laohala to heart. All on this episode of Hiki no, coming to you from Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School in Lihui, Kauai, home of the Pueo. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network. Hiki no can do. Aloha and welcome to Chiefess Kamakahele Middle School here on the Garden Island of Kauai. CKMS first opened its doors in the fall of 2000 and today services 899 6th, 7th and 8th graders from the central Kauai area stretching from Kalaheo to Hanama'ulu and all points in between. Today we're going to do something a little different from what you've seen in past Tiki No episodes. We're going to show you what life is like in a normal day here at Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School on Kauai. For those of you who have moved on from middle school, have things changed over the years from when you went to junior high as they used to call it? Stick around and we'll show you what it's like over the course of the show. Our first story comes from Waianae High School on Oahu, where students present a chilling account of an athlete's experience with head trauma, also known as a concussion. I don't remember much, but I remember I jumped up for a ball, and when I came down, I landed on my neck, and I just blacked out. Wainai High School senior Chaz Bolig is really into football. He's got video games, banners, even signs. I don't know how I'm going to set this up, though. He obviously loves to relax off the field. But things take a turn for the serious when he straps on his helmet for the Sea Rider football team. But he's proven that Chaz can take down anything on the field, but it's big hits like these that has left many people concerned about an issue that is hard to wrap their head around. A little groggy here. Youth football and head trauma. I lost memory for a very long time. I think it was a week, a whole week. In 2009, Chaz suffered a very severe concussion. It left him on the sidelines for more than a month. Well, during the blackout, like, I felt very lost. Like, I could not speak. So I just was like asking him what happened. It's actually um, an injury to the brain. Liz so. Beaver is one of two athletic trainers responsible for a few hundred athletes at Waianae High. Even though only two cases have been reported so far this year, she understands. It's a very serious injury, and the more we learn about concussions, the more we know how important it is to treat it properly. When he collapsed on the sidelines. Who is protecting the athlete? New regulations about concussions. High school sports programs from across the nation have put this issue above all else. Locally, Hawaii athletes have to go through numerous steps to even step back onto the field. They have to get a clearance from a physician. Once they get clearance from a physician and they don't have symptoms anymore, then we start on a seven step return to play protocol. So what, you just not gonna, you just gonna wear your helmet today or what? If this protocol isn't followed, it can possibly lead to long-term memory loss and in extreme cases, death. You don't wanna think of the the death part or anything, but it's just more of how is he going to be after he recovers or even if he recovers. Chaz is no stranger to bouncing back. Four years later, it seems there's no lingering effects. Okay, so what if my research question is, um, 
What makes a good and unique designer toy? The road to recovery was long and difficult, but it'll take more than that to tear Chaz from what defines him. Determination, resilience, and the true strength of an athlete. This is Diamond Tuisano from Wainai High School for Kiki No. We're back at Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School on Kauai. A typical day for us starts in what's called our advisory class. You might know it as homeroom. In advisory, we turn on our TVs and watch our morning announcements broadcast live throughout our school's closed circuit TV system. Here, our leadership students write up the scripts that they will be saying with all of the announcements for the day. Our own CKTV Media Productions class does all the behind the scenes work, manning our cameras, monitoring our audio, placing our text and titles in just the right spots, and switching back and forth between our announcers. The leadership class and CKTV Media class work together to put on this live morning announcement show. We take you now to the Valley Isle, where students from Maui High School report on the impact of Hawaii's new same-sex marriage law on the local wedding industry. Okay, so I'm creating a focal point for the ceremony. Kevin Ribello is an officiant and photographer for both same-sex and straight weddings in Hawaii. I would say most of the couples that we marry, both visitor and local, have all been together 10 on years on up. They've been waiting for this. Ribello is also in a same-sex relationship. Well, when we met 20 years ago, we wanted to get married. As a gay couple, we wanted to have you know, the same opportunities that straight couples do when they get married. Before Senate Bill 1 legalizing same-sex marriage passed on November 13, 2013, Rubella would perform marriage ceremonies that were not recognized by the state, but served as personal expressions and political statements. We would do it exact same way as a straight wedding. For us, it was a civil rights issue, so I never called them commitment ceremonies. We always called them weddings and marriage because to us, that's what we were fighting for. After Hawaii became the 15th state to legalize same-sex marriage, Rebello benefited both personally and professionally. Oh, we were ecstatic. It was like a battle that we finally won. Now he can share that satisfaction with other same-sex couples. We set up all their license appointment with the agents. There's no waiting period. Couples simply go online, fill out the application, meet with the agent, and can get married that same day. So it's just easy to get married in Hawaii. Hey, Tom, this is Kevin at Hawaii Wedding again. State Representative Chris Lee was one of the most vocal proponents for marriage equality in Hawaii. Because this isn't only about uh, fulfilling our obligation to do the right thing under the Constitution, but it's about doing what's right for everybody here in Hawaii. And with tourism the center of our economy, this was another step in that direction. So you guys should be ready for the reception about that We time. should, yeah. Representative Lee is anticipating an economic boost for local businesses who want to capitalize on the legalization of same-sex marriage. You know, especially here in Hawaii where aloha is what binds us all together and it's what we sell to tourists visiting the state, we find that the University of Hawaii has an economic analysis that said $217 million in additional tax revenue and additional monies coming into the state uh, we're going to see over the next two years. Ribello is already seeing the impact of the new law on his business. He has booked between 30 and 40 same-sex weddings since Senate Bill 1 was put into effect on December 2nd. Yeah, but we thought about putting a ban We've seen a stuff. tremendous increase in business. We probably book one wedding a day, gay and lesbian weddings, whereas in the past maybe two a month. So this is, for example, the month of December. You can tell that on certain days we had up to four weddings a day. Between his full planner, Kevin is also ready to take advantage of the legalization for himself. We've been together 20 years. We had a ceremony 12 years ago, and then we're going to get our Hawaii marriage license actually tomorrow, believe it or not. This is Michelle Gima from Maui High School for Hikino. If you'd like to comment on this story or anything you see on Hikino, like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash do or send us a tweet at twitter.com slash do. We're back for our look at a day in the life of Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School on Kauai. In addition to the morning announcements, our CKTV media class is also responsible for the inside scoop, heard on FM 97 radio, here on Kauai. 
The Inside Scoop is a short two-minute broadcast announcing all of the things happening in all of our Kauai schools for that day and week. It's aired every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday three times each day. Our students have to contact their fellow Kauai schools for their activities and write up three separate scripts that they must then record and edit into their own two-minute segments. It's a great way to keep our community informed on what's happening in our schools. Later on in this episode of Hikino, students from Wheeler Middle School will teach you a kendama trick called the airplane. But first, a report by students at Mid-Pacific Institute on how a traditional Japanese card game is reaching our generation. Hanafuda, a traditional Japanese card game, has been a deeply rooted old-time classic for the people of Hawaii since the beginning of the 20th century and inspired local resident Helen Lakano to start up her own organization, Hanafuda Hawaii, to carry on the Hanafuda tradition to today's generation. Because Hanafuda was brought in through the plantations, it became, to me, People think of this as local, part of local culture. They don't necessarily think, oh, this is a Japanese game. This is a local game. The goal of Hanafuda is to match the bright and vibrant card suits with its corresponding double to collect as many points as possible. Hanafuda is also a way for different generations to form deeper connections. I think I like it just because it brings back memories, like it's childhood memories and um, it just re reminds me of good times. It's a game that has a lot of luck, so if you're a beginner, it's still really fun to try because you have a chance at actually winning. I like it because it's, it's a card game, it's fun. I mean, card games are always fun. When they came to our troop, the Nakanos came to our troop and talked about Hanafuda and they talked about how it came to Hawaii with the plantation workers and I think it's a good, uh, just a little bit of history. But Hanafuda isn't as popular as it was in those days. In today's busy society, live conversations are taking a back seat to the allure of modern technology. I see technology taking us further and further apart. I see families where individuals in the families are going to dinner together or something like that and everybody's on some electronic device and it's going to be very difficult to keep the family together so I'm going to do my darndest to make Hanafuda a game that forces people to sit down interact face to face. In today's busy high-tech society it is often easy to forget the values of intergenerational contact Hanafuda offers a unique venue to rekindle this connection, giving players a rich taste of a timeless Hawaii classic. This is Wilta Tori from Mid-Pacific Institute for Hiki no. We're back at Chiefess Kamakahele Middle School on Kauai. Our school is built from the ground up with middle school students in mind. Here, our sidewalks are wider because middle school students tend to walk together in groups, side by side. The courtyard in each grade level house was also designed to cater to the needs of our students. Sixth graders are typically more active and tend to move around, so they have more open space. Our seventh graders gain more seating areas in their house, and our eighth graders like to sit during their free time. As you can see, they have a lot more seating areas to choose from. We even have a no walking on the grass rule here but that's to keep our internal grassy areas free from dirt and mud. This rule doesn't apply to our PE field, of course. Our students still go out for regular PE or physical education. We return now to the island of Maui, where Lahaina Intermediate reporter Anne-Marie Eastridge introduces us to a local artist who turns metal into water and who also happens to be her father. Mark Eastridge is a local artist on the island of Maui. He uses a variety of techniques to put a unique spin on his work. I became interested in art when I was quite young, about age 10 or 11 years old. And I think I made my first painting when I was 11. For me, art has been a lifelong exploration. While most artists work in only one media, I've never been happy with such limitations. I've always explored a lot of different media. I've worked in glass and stone and metal. 
Um, started off as a painter, but what I'm really enjoying working with right now is grinding on various sheets of metal. Currently I'm grinding on sheets of aluminum, and this grinder here is my pencil. This is what I'm doing most of my artwork with. And I will grind my patterns in sheets of aluminum. And aluminum's great because it's a very reflective surface and I can play with the light. And when my artwork is hanging on a gallery wall or in a home, the facets that are made from the grinding wheel will capture the light and reflect and refract the light. And I can actually make the sheets of metal look like moving water. When you see it in person, I can make it look like the water is moving as the viewer is walking back and forth across the room. Living on this beautiful island of Maui, I'm obviously inspired by the ocean, all of the water around me, the beautiful scenery that we have all around here. I've really focused, I've really concentrated my efforts on working with water. With the abundance of water surrounding our state, this should keep Mark inspired for a long time. This is Anne-Marie Eastridge from Lahaina Intermediate for Hikino. We're back with a look at a day in the life at Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School on Kauai. Even though our campus was built over 13 years ago, it still looks like new and it's because of our dedicated custodial staff who go the extra mile to keep our campus looking great. Our water fountains are still sparkly, shiny, and our lockers still look brand new. Through our advisory classes, we also participate in a program called Malama Ka'aina, which helps keep our campus clean. Two times each week, eight of our advisory classes spread out throughout our campus to pick up any rubbish they can find. Our next story takes us to Hawaii Island, where students at Konawaina High School introduce us to a family that has a passion for spelling. On the big island of Hawaii, the Nakamoto family has made a name for themselves. All six children of this tight-knit family were named after the first initial of their parents' names. The boys, Keegan, Talmadge, Taggart, and Tanner, were named after their mother, Tracy. The girls, Sydney and Stacy, were named after their father, Shan. Their fascination with letters has not stopped there. Competing in spelling bees has become a family tradition. It is normal for this family of word nerds to include spelling and wordplay into their daily lives. We got started um, when our oldest son, Tegan, was a, well, when he was a seventh grader, is when he came in as runner-up for the um, school spelling bee at Konawaina Middle. And he, um, so we kind of stumbled into it with him, went to the District B, which is at Kealakehe Intermediate's um, cafeteria, and there were only about 14 contestants and got to the end and he had won. We had no idea what we'd stumbled into. <laughs> he um, then got to go and represent th this island on, in Oahu for the state spelling bee and I believe he tied for seventh place that year and just really kind of started to enjoy playing with words and working uh, with the spellings and the language of origin and all of the different components for spelling. Since then, three Nakamotos have participated in the spelling bee. Tegan, the oldest, was a state finalist in 2005 and 2006. Talmadge, the second oldest, won sixth place in the 2007 state spelling bee and was the state champ in 2008 and 2009, allowing him to represent Hawaii in the Scripps National Spelling Bee in Washington, D.C. Taggart is the most recent speller who won the 2012 State Spelling Bee, which was broadcast statewide on PBS Hawaii. And we have a new state champion. Is that correct, judges? All right. Come over here, Taggart. Not only has participating in spelling bees expanded their vocabulary, it has also given the Nakamoto boys confidence in other areas of their lives. Talmadge and Taggart both have a speech impediment and are uncomfortable in social situations. However, this did not stop Talmadge from becoming a valedictorian for Kanawana High School Class of 2013. Spelling has become a tradition for this family of eight and has allowed their children to shine. Which brings us to round two. We're not the most athletic of families. Um, not going to ever really play football when kids are only five foot something. <laughs> um, but the words are something that they can always have fun with and, and it's done really well for uh, for our older boys. They've um, 
our oldest son was a, a National Merit Scholar, and we really think part of it is just the exposure to all different kinds of subjects and the vocabulary and everything that goes along with spelling. It just, it just stays with you. This is Olivia May Gray, reporting from Konoina High School for Hikino. H-I-K-I-N-O. Let's get back to Chief Kamakahela Middle School on Kauai. When it's time to eat, our students head up to our cafeteria. Nowadays, students don't need to bring any cash to school to purchase their meals. Parents make a prepayment into their child's account, and each student uses his or her ID badge to make a purchase in our cafeteria. Regular lunches now cost $2.25, which is still a pretty good deal, although our teachers remember when school lunches used to cost just 25 cents. In addition to paying for meals, our school IDs also allow students to borrow books in our library. We take you now to the Manoa District of Oahu, where students at Punahou School tell the story of a librarian who finds simple pleasure in a very intricate art form. Lynette Roster, a librarian at Punahou School, is known for transforming lohala leaves into beautiful papale, or woven hats. Weaving a hat is probably the hardest project to do in lohala weaving. Um, there's many steps. So you need somebody to help you throughout all the changes in a hat. The kumu all say it takes about five hats before you start to understand. After weaving five, you can make one on your own. And um, I found that to be true. So uh, I'm currently working on this hat and I'm making a pattern on the crown. This is on a wood block, or we call it an ipu. Um, this style is called a dome, and the pattern I'm making is called the pico pattern. Lauhala has changed my life. It really has. Uh, I'm, I feel like I'm more grateful on a daily basis to have found this, you know, you can call it a hobby, but it's more than that for me. It's a, it's spiritual. When I'm just sitting down and weaving, I'm here, I'm not thinking about anything else but what I'm doing with my hands and I can create a design that comes in my head. It's a good feeling to, to just concentrate on it. Her passion and love for lohala weaving is shown in the quality of the 20 hats she has created. Although each work of art could be sold for hundreds of dollars, Lynette Roster chooses to give these hats to others. You know, it's such a gift of love that you give it to somebody who you really care about. So my sister has one of my hats, um, you know, my husband, my mother. My close friends have gotten hats. I feel not, not exactly, proud's not the word, but I feel grateful that they value it. No one else will have that exact same thing. Um, I made it, uh, I designed it, and it's one of a kind, and all my heart goes into it. For Roster, these hats are an expression of her love. And through the art of lauhala weaving, her aloha is shared with others. Reporting from Puno School, I'm Elena Kobayashi for Hiki no. We're back on Kauai at Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School, which has an electronics policy that allows our students to use their smartphones, iPads or tablets, or handheld gaming devices during non-instructional hours. To receive this privilege, students and their parents must sign and agree to our policy. By doing so, students receive a K stamp on their ID which signifies that they are allowed to use their electronics on campus. Many teachers have embraced this policy and allow students to use their electronics in class for educational purposes like taking notes, looking up information on the web, or using a specific app to map out an ID. And now, as promised, students from Wheeler Middle School show you how to do a very slick kendama trick. Remember these? Kendamas are making a comeback in Hawaii schools. 
You might remember the big cup trick, which everyone starts out with. What trick? Today, we will teach you another popular trick called the airplane. I can get light asses like every try. Step one, hold the ball with your thumb, forefinger, and middle finger. Hold the ball so the hole is facing up, and the spike hanging from the string is also facing up. Make sure the hanging can or wooden stick is still. Then swing the can outward. Try to swing it out so it stays in a consistent arc. The last step is to practice, practice, and practice. It's not easy to do, but it's great fun to keep trying. We'll hope you have fun. Check out kendama.or.jp slash English for more tricks. This is Monabel Cabigon from Wheeler Middle School for Hikino. Well, that does it for this week's show. We hope you enjoyed the stories from around our state and learned a little bit about what middle school is like for our generation. While some things have changed, others have stayed the same. Like homework. Yeah. I wish that changed. Join us next week to see what the talented students of Hawaii can do. On Hikino. Only on PBS Hawaii. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. And HMSA, helping Hawaii's youth and their families stay healthy today, tomorrow, and for generations to come. HMSA, trusted for generations.